used to be that uh, the bedrock of, Amer of European security was always the transatlantic partnership. Now we have to face certain realities in the 21st century. Donald Trump, President Donald Trump, of course, has made it known many times that uh, he does not particularly see uh, Europe as a partner, but ra rather as a rival in many uh, regards. Uh, the transatlantic partnership, he does not place as much emphasis and value on as his predecessors. How, how to solve this dilemma? Look, I have a different um, approach when it comes to President Trump than the European mainstream. Because um, I think that uh, Europe should not act as a teacher of the world, and we should not necessarily uh, express uh, our opinion about uh, decisions of other countries and other nations about their own destiny. So I definitely disliked the hysteria which was uh, created in Europe after President Trump was elected. Even the foreign ministers, uh, I don't know whether you were around at that time, the for EV, the foreign ministers were gathered for an extraordinary meeting after the American election. There were two of us not to show up, Boris Johnson and myself, because I said, why should I go? I mean, what do I have to do with the decision of the American people? We have only one duty regarding that, respect it. And then work together with the president who is elected by the Americans, because it's not us Europeans to elect the president of the United States, as we Hungarians uh, usually ask everybody to stay away from our domestic issues, we should do it um, with the others as well. So I think that the hysteria uh, created in Europe by mainstream media and some mainstream politicians after President Trump was elected was not helpful. This is number one. Number two, when uh, President Trump speaks about uh, his expectations towards the European allies to increase uh, defense spending, for example, to contribute more to the success of the alliance, I think that is legitimate. I mean, we all of us have undertaken the obligations in Wales that until 2024, we will increase our uh, defense spending. And we are not at 2% either yet, but we have a plan how to get there. So I think it's legitimate from his perspective when he asks us to um, uh, contribute and we are really in favor of the European defense cooperation and European defense efforts uh, to be uh, enhanced. And I, I really do believe that, uh, that this transatlantic uh, bond uh, has a real significance from the perspective of the future of the European Union. But in the meantime, I have to add that I really do believe that we Europeans have to be able to build a uh, realistic or rational or common sense based uh, relationship to the East as well, because I'm representing a small Central European country and we have learned the lesson of history very clearly that whenever there was a conflict between East and West, we Central Europeans always lost, regardless what time the conflict took place, regardless who were the stakeholders, regardless what was the reason, we Central Europeans always lost. So whenever we argue in favor of a rational, common respect or common sense-based East to West dialogue, this is not because of these stupid accusations we got in European media that would be spies of Putin and spies of the Russians, whatever, no. This is our national security interest that East and West can be engaged in a rational dialogue. Of course, now preconditions are not entirely given, unfortunately. These small Central European countries definitely not going to be the game changers, but we argue in favor of this uh, dialogue um, uh, very, um, let's say, uh, inspiredly because this is our national security, in, in national security interest. But, but I really do believe that the U.S.-EU relations uh, uh, remain uh, key and we have to do our best. For example, by our Western European friends not necessarily commenting on all moves of the next month uh, presidential election campaign in the United States. Now, you talked about hy hysteric hysteria on the part of uh, some of the European countries or media, as you call it, but there are some concrete steps. I mean, the U.S. president is supporting Brexit. He is undermining NATO by calling it obsolete. I mean, these are things that he's, uh, that is undermining the European Union. No, be, be fair. Uh, be in the lines that you are part of, say, He didn't say NATO is obsolete, so this yeah. is a big mistake of European media, he didn't say that. That was a history. He said NATO is absolute in the sense that it should have been much more uh, engaged in the anti-terror fight. So don't only quote the first part of the sentence, but quote the whole sentence, because if we make half quotations, we can create such kind of problems that we have uh, in the, uh, in the EU, uh, US relationship uh, currently.